It's been about two months since the ROG Phone 7 was launched, but we've been testing it for a while, and we want to tell you whether or not this phone is going to be a game changer for you. So let's find out in this video. Before we get started with this review of the ROG Phone 7, make sure to hit the like button if you're enjoying iGAN content. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already a part of the team. Leave a comment below on what your thoughts are on the ROG Phone 7. Let's get into the video. As far as the design and the build is concerned, this is a very robust phone. You've got a metal frame, which is not going to flex at all. And on the back, you have a translucent come matte finish design. All of this has a Corning Gorilla Glass 3 on it. And on the front, you have a nice and large display, which does have a Gorilla Glass Victus to protect it. Overall, it's a really well-built phone. You've got metal buttons, you've got still the air triggers, and you've also got lighting on the back of the phone, which we'll get into a little bit later. For protections, you do have IP54, which is much more than what we've seen with previous generations of the ROG phones, but I would still keep it away from water as much as you can. The display is a 6.78 inch display. It's an AMOLED panel with a 2448 by 1080 pixel resolution. You also get 165 hertz of refresh rate, which in itself is kind of ridiculous, but you then also get 720 hertz of touch sampling, which is kind of unheard of. So you've got a really fast, very responsive display, which also has really good colors and an infinite contrast being the OLED panel that it is. Despite the responsiveness and the fast display, you do have a pretty good brightness, but it's not as good as some of the other devices that you get in this price bracket. This phone has 500 nits of typical brightness and 1000 nits of peak brightness, but the advertised number is much higher. So you get 1500 nits of advertised brightness, but that is only 1% of the active display. So if you're looking at the full 100% of the display, the peak brightness that you're getting, is only a thousand nits, which is much less in comparison to some of the other phones that you can get in this market. Some flagships from some other brands will give you much higher peak brightness as well as typical brightness. The display also has really accurate colors. It nails about 111% on the DCI-P3 color gamut and about 150% on the sRGB color space. And you do have the color mode options in the settings panel. So you can switch between the cinema mode, which is basically precise DCI-P3. And you can also switch to the standard mode, which gives you sRGB. So if you're somebody who's editing photos or videos on the ROG Phone 7, you can get color accurate representation on the display. So the speakers on the ROG Phone 7, much like previous generations of the ROG Phone, are forward firing, which means uh, that you'll get really good sound directed right at you. But this ROG Phone 7 also has much larger speaker capacity. So the speaker volume, I mean the size of the speaker, not the volume of the sound, the size of the speaker is 1.5 cc, which is 0.5 cc more uh, than previous generations of the ROG phone. The sound output from the ROG phone 7 is also really loud and because it is forward firing and the way the speakers are placed, you will not end up muffling the speakers even if you hold your phone tight as in when you would while gaming. Whether that would cause the headset to sort of uh, jitter or miss my actions a little bit and that wasn't happening at all so once you look at a particular point if you look at you also have the audio wizard which allows you to customize the sound output so you have a infinitely customizable equalizer but you do have some presets in there so if you're gaming or if you're watching movies you can pick one of the presets and get an audio optimized for that and unlike previous iterations of the rog phone which missed out on this crucial feature of gaming uh, the ROG Phone 7 brings back the audio jack, so if you want a physical audio connection while gaming, you can get that with the ROG Phone 7, which is also a very rare thing to find in smartphones these days. Powering everything are two batteries, 3000 milliamp hour each. Uh, they're connected inside, so it gives you a total of 6000 milliamps. And that's impressive battery for uh, a gaming phone, and you also get an impressive battery output. It's rated for about 18 hours of uh, internet consumption, and we saw numbers close to that, so you can have this phone running basically the entire day. As long as you're not gaming, and uh, you can run an entire day and then the entire next day and not require a charge. Speaking of charging, you do have the ability to charge up to 65 watts, and you do have two USB-C ports, as we've seen with ROG phones in the past. But in India, you're only getting the 30 watt charger, which is because Nobody cares about India, right? And then also the claimed fast charging speeds don't work with the 30 watt charger because you're getting really slow charging. So if you have a faster charger, you should plug that in, get the advantage of the 65 watt charging. You can also buy a GAN charger and we'll recommend some. We'll drop them in the description below. Go check those out. 
and uh, just improve your charging speed because the included charger is basically pointless if you're going to be gaming on this for a long period of time. And the phone also heats up quite a lot with this 30 watt charger. So I think the reason why they've reduced the charger is because in India temperatures are generally higher. So the phone will heat up much more. You can use a fast charger and you should because the phone supports 65 watts. Let's talk about the user interface. As always, you do have an ASUS skin sort of UI uh, that you can use if you like that user interface. You've got lots of customizations in there, lots of icons, lots of uh, RGB focused colors. So it's a very gaming centric uh, user interface, but you do have the option to switch to a very stock Android user interface to the point where you can also customize the quick settings panel. So if you drop it down, uh, you can have uh, Android stock buttons instead of ASUS optimized buttons, which if you like something like a stock Android feel from a Pixel device, you can get that on this phone, which is fantastic. Uh, but you can also enjoy the full ASUS skin version, which also gives you a lot of gaming centric features. One thing that is really annoying is uh, the pinch bottom here. In just uh, talking to you guys, I've turned on and off the X mode multiple times. So you have to be wary of that because you may accidentally sort of enable or disable that uh, while holding the phone like this, which most people hold their phone like this. So ASUS might come and say you're holding it wrong because you remember somebody said that back in the day. Another great thing of the user interface are the haptics. Uh, the haptics on this phone are really incredible and uh, you'll find a good use of them in the entire user interface. So whether you're switching on the armory crate or you're tapping the air triggers or you're just going through the menu, the haptics are prevalent and they feel amazing. They also give you a sense of actually clicking buttons and it feels great on the phone. That means that the vibration motors that have been used are of a really high quality and that also applies when you are getting phone calls. Also, if you are going to be gaming, uh, the X mode is uh, what is going to be really useful to you. So it boosts up both the CPU, the GPU and optimizes the phone to give you the best gaming output. It also turns off notifications and puts your calls in the background so you're not disturbed. To control everything, you of course have the armory crate. Uh, this allows you to switch between uh, different modes. So the X mode is what you're going to be using the most. And then it also gives you all the details of your uh, CPU, GPU, etc. right here on the screen for you to manage. And then you can also control uh, specific settings for each specific game. And then while you're in the game, you can also pull out things like uh, trigger controls and uh, trigger options. And uh, you do have your air triggers over here that are split into two. So you can have two triggers on each side and control basically actions in the game and you can place the triggers on the screen so it mimics a screen touch, but you actually end up using triggers. So if a game doesn't support it, the Armory Crate and ASUS's implementation of it will allow you to use the triggers despite the fact that triggers are not supported on a game. As far as gaming is concerned, this phone is basically a gaming phone and it does deliver on that performance. You've got a really high performance chip, you've got tons of RAM, and you've got a really fast storage, and it just delivers on that gaming performance. The 165 hertz of refresh rate doesn't hurt as well and nor does the 720 hertz of touch sampling. So if you had issues where your fingers were not recognized fast enough, that's not going to be a problem on this phone at all. The ROG Phone 7 also has built-in ray tracing. So if you are gaming, you get better shadows, better reflections, all that good stuff built in. So you just get a better gaming performance on this device as compared to many other phones in the price bracket or even below the price bracket. And we didn't see any kind of lag, any kind of crashing. They've optimized this phone really well for gaming. And if you're doing casual gaming or really high-end gaming, even if you're a pro smartphone gamer, you, know, you will thoroughly enjoy gaming on this device. Uh, the dual USB ports also help. So you can have one charging and one for the accessory. They still sell their fan, which is a cooler, an active cooler. So you can attach that on the back here as well. And then you can have a charger plugged into the other side. You can have your headphones plugged in directly. So there is no lag. There is no latency issues. You've got everything hardwired and you can get your gaming experience on uh, full depth. And that is what the ROG Phone 7 promises. Let's talk about hardware variants. Running everything is a Qualcomm Snapdragon Series 8 Gen 2 chip, which is highly customized for this device, allowing you to get much more performance out of the chip. Because of the active cooler and because of the overclocking, you will expect a lot more heat generation. And ASUS manages the heat really well with their GameCool 7 thermal uh, management system, which is basically a fancier name I don't even know if it's fancy, but it's a name for an active vapor 
cooling chamber and then the active aero fan that you can have on here. So they manage thermals really well. The crux of the matter is that. We found that to be more or less true. The only issue we found was that during charging, the phone heats up and uh, that is the only thermal issue that we found. Now you do have uh, variants as far as RAM is concerned. So you get a 12 gigabyte plus 256 gigabyte storage. And then you also get a 16 gigabyte plus 512 gigabyte uh, storage variant. So you can pick that or you can also opt in for the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate which then gives you the same 16 plus 512 uh, variant, but you do get some other features, including a display on the back, uh, an active cooler built in, you know, plus some other features uh, that are very specific to the Ultimate phone. But that price is also much higher. And if you're looking for getting into the ROG Phone 7, I would say that the 16 512 version of the standard ROG Phone 7 is the better bet. Let's talk about the cameras, uh, because on the gaming phone, you're not gonna be using the cameras, but if you intend to buy it for other reasons, then of course you wanna know about the cameras. So the main camera on the back is a 50 megapixel shooter, uh, which does do 8K video at 24 frames per second. The secondary camera is a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera. And then we do have some garbage in the cameras as well. So you do get a five megapixel macro shooter. Although it's better than a two megapixel macro shooter, but a five megapixel macro shooter. Instead, just give us a better ultra wide camera with macro built in. I know phone companies can do that, you know, but they've decided not to do it. Instead, they could have given us a telephoto, but they've decided not to do it. So you do get that garbage five megapixel camera, just remove them. Nobody wants that, nobody's using it. As far as 4K is concerned, you get up to 120 FPS, but then you have to go to the super slow motion side of things. Uh, so on standard, you get 4K 60, but you also get 120 on 4K. 8K 24 is also not a usable resolution or a frame rate. That is also just a sort of a push saying that, look, we can do 8K. Video quality is good. The audio capture is also nice. The microphone built in gives you that. Uh, 4K 60 video looks fantastic on the screen because of the color accurate nature and also the cameras have been optimized well. Images also look good from it. We'll have some samples on the screen right now for you to analyze for yourself. The front facing camera has a 32 megapixel sensor, so you'll get pretty good images from the front camera. You also have portrait mode and other usual suspects. But for video, you're only getting 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is really disappointing. It's 2023. You have a really powerful chip in there. Give us good video on the front camera. But no, it's not going to be there. So look at the samples on the screen right now and figure out for yourself uh, what you think about uh, this camera on ROG Phone 7 and then let us know what your thoughts are and whether you would pick this phone for the camera capability itself. Overall, the ROG Phone 7 has been designed for gaming and it delivers on that performance with a really impressive display, great speakers, lots of connectivity options. Like I mentioned, two USB ports. One is a Gen 3.2, one is a Gen 2. So you can use one for charging, one for data speeds, or just both for charging. I mean, you have infinite options over here, and then you also have a headphone jack. So it's designed for gaming, but by itself also, it's a pretty good looking phone. So if you don't want to use it for gaming, it's a pretty impressive display. Like I mentioned, it's a large phone, but you do have a top forehead and a bottom chin, giving it not the most modern look, but you do have forward firing speakers. So it sort of makes up for all its downsides. It's also a heavy phone at 240 grams. It's not the lightest phone that you can get. And it also feels dense, uh, means that it doesn't feel like it's a light phone pretending to be a heavy phone. You can feel the density of this device. You're also getting a frame cover inside the box but you're only getting a slow charger in India. Should you be putting your money in this? Make a decision. I say it's a good option for uh, being a flagship device with really good hardware in there, but they're missing out on some crucial elements which could have made this phone just a tad bit better. That's our review. If you enjoyed it, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're not already a part of Team iGAN. I'll see you guys in the next one.